Okay, I'm going over a mechanism design problem, and this is one that's associated with moral hazard, where the uh, mechanism designer is trying to um, get certain behaviors out of the people who enter into the contract. In particular, we're talking about an insurance company and a farmer. And I'll put the details to this problem below, in case you want to read them. But here's the basic setup. So we have a farmer who has the option to make a $10,000 investment in technology for their farm that increases the likelihood that there's a good farm outcome. Um, and there's two possible outcomes. Good outcome will get the farmer $900,000, and this is the uninsured column. They get $9,000 just from the, the crops that they get. Um, and if they have a bad outcome, they only make $225,000. And the investment in the $10,000 technology is going to just increase the chances of a good outcome. So with the investment, you have a 75% chance of a good outcome, 25% chance of a bad outcome. Without the investment, you have a 55% chance of a good outcome and a 45% chance of a bad outcome. And the insurance company is trying to decide what to charge their insurance premium and what their payout should be if there's a bad outcome. And so there's two choice variables for the insurer. And of course, we want to start thinking about this by thinking about who is the principal, who is the agent, and what, what are the choice variables of each player. So let's write that out. So here we have a situation where the insurer is going to be trying to influence the farmer. In particular, the insurer wants to make sure that the farmer invests in this technology, because if they don't invest, that's of course going to drive up insurance prices for everyone. So the principal is the insurer. They determine the price of insurance and the payout if there is a bad outcome. And both of those, of course, are exogenous to the farmer. The farmer, the farmer is choosing whether or not to invest in this $10,000 technology to improve the chances of a good outcome. And the, in, the farmer is also going to decide, do you insure or do you just take your own risks? So here we have our setup, and we'll keep these choice variables in mind. Now we want to come up with incentive compatibility constraints and participation constraints. So we might want to get into our heads, what are we trying to incentivize with our incentive compatibility constraints? And in this case, we're trying to incentivize good behavior of investing in the technology. And our participation constraints are basically just, we want the farmer to buy our insurance. So let's write up the generic version of those two types of constraints now. Okay, so here we have our incentive compatibility constraint. And for a behavior type of problem like this, one that's associated more with moral hazard than adverse selection, um, our incentive compatibility constraints are basically good behavior from the perspective of the principal, um, looking at the agent. So it's, it's actually from the agent's perspective, but the good, but what defines good or bad behavior is the principal, because the principal's the one trying to get good behavior for the principal. And in any case, Good behavior is preferred to bad behavior is going to be the incentive compatibility constraint. And in this setup, good behavior is investing in the technology that increases the chances of a good outcome. So um, what we're trying to force, this is basically the package that we're trying to enforce is the farmer investing and insuring. That's good behavior and participation. So utility of investing and insuring, good behavior and participating, is better, greater than the utility of not investing, bad behavior and insuring, participating. That's the incentive compatibility constraint. And then the participation constraint is, of course, um, utility of the package we're trying to force on them, which is good behavior and participating, is preferred to good behavior and not participating. Because we know actually, if we do out the math, that if the farmer is not insured, the farmer will definitely choose to invest in this technology that improves the chances of a good outcome. So, participation constraint, we want the utility of investing and insuring to be greater than the utility of investing and not insuring. So buying the insurance is what we mean when we say participation in this case for our participation constraint. So now all we have to do is we have to set up these utility functions. So 
Utility of Invest Insure, and that appears twice up here. Utility of Don't Invest Insure, and Utility of Invest Don't Insure. So um, let's do that next. One thing I forgot to mention is that um, we're going to have a very simple utility function over money, and so utility over money is just equal to the square root of money. Let me write that out. Okay, so in this situation, we're setting up the package that we're trying to make sure that the farmer chooses. We, as the insurance company, sort of overlooking the farmer's behavior, know that we want the farmer to invest in this technology that increases the chances of a good outcome, and we want them to choose to buy insurance. So we'll set up their utility if they choose those two things, which is going to be the probability of a good outcome if they invest. And of course, this is the column for if they invest. We know there's a 75% chance that they'll have a good outcome. And then utility over money, since it's over money, we use the utility function, the square root function. And how much money do we have if we choose um, to invest in insure and if we have a good outcome? Well, our crops yield the 900,000, but of course we come over to this insured uh, column. We know if we choose to be insured, we get our $9,000, $900,000 crop yield, but we have to pay the insurance premium P. Now, if we're in the invest column, which we are, we also need to pay the $10,000 investment uh, fee. So our total money will be the crop yield of 900,000 minus the insurance premium we have to pay for the insurance minus the $10,000 uh, investment cost. That's our utility over money if we have a good outcome. And then we have plus the probability of a bad outcome in these two scenarios. So we've invested, so we knew our probability of a bad outcome is 25% times our money, our utility over money if we have a bad outcome. So if we have a bad outcome, our crops only yield $225,000. Um, $225, we still have to pay the insurance premium P um, but we get payout from the insurance company B, so that's nice, and we also still have to pay the um, upfront cost of the investment in the technology since we're in this column. We've chosen to invest, we've chosen to insure, so we're paying the insurance premium, we're paying the investment cost, but if the outcome is bad, we get a payout from the insurance company. So this is just simply our utility in the case where we've invested and insured. And if we're doing an incentive compatibility constraint, we want to make sure that good behavior with the insurance is preferred to bad behavior. And what is bad behavior in this case? Bad behavior is not investing in the $10,000 technology, in which case our probabilities of good and bad outcomes are in this column. We, we have a much lower chance of a good outcome, only 55% chance of a good outcome. 45% chance of a bad outcome, so let's set up the same utility function except where our choice is to not invest instead of invest. And of course the interpretations here are the same. Here we have the probability of a good outcome, probability of a bad outcome. Those are in the case of don't invest and that's the key here is this is utility if you don't invest but you're insured, in which case you have to pay the insurance premium in both cases, whether or not there's a good or bad outcome, you still pay the insurance company, but if there's a bad outcome, if we're over here, we also get a payout B. Um, so we need to set up an inequality such that utility of invest and insure, this whole line is greater than or equal to the utility of don't invest insure, and that's going to give us an inequality that will help us as the insurer determine the optimal P and B. And that is our incentive compatibility constraint. I'm not going to write that out because you can simply do that yourself. It's literally just writing this and then putting an inequality that says this is preferred to this. That's all it is. As a matter of fact, I could just go ahead and do that right now by putting a big old greater than or equal to sign in, in between these. So now we know this needs to be greater than or equal to this. That is our incentive compatibility constraint. 
which will guarantee that our farmer has good behavior. Now, our second thing we need to do is make sure the farmer chooses to buy insurance. That's going to be our participation constraint. In which case, um, the participation constraint, we're still trying to force the same package, which is the utility of invest and insure. We just need to make sure that this is better than the utility of invest and don't insure. So uh, let me erase parts of this to set that up. All right, so here is our participation constraint. Um, as a matter of fact, it's still true. We can still use this thing in the middle that what we're trying to force needs to be greater than or equal to the thing we don't want, which is for pe the farmers to invest but not purchase our insurance. So um, utility of investing and purchasing insurance is greater than or equal to investing without insurance. So the difference between these equations, let's look at the similarities and differences. They have the same probabilities of a good outcome and a bad outcome because in both cases we're investing we're always going to be in this column of probabilities the difference is with the insurance you pay the insurance premium p in our case we're trying to force invest insure um, and you get payout b if if there's a bad outcome in this case we don't pay um, the invest don't insure we do not pay the insurance premium so that does not appear anywhere here and we also do not get any payout if there's a bad outcome of B. We don't get that. So we get whatever our crop yield is minus the investment cost, which is $10,000. And so as long as this is preferred to this, then our participation constraint is satisfied. And that's pretty much it.